welcome back. This is question and answers on creating abundance. And we were talking about you know the skit on Saturday Night Live and the fact that you know you you need to be on that growing edge of of affirmations. And the growing edge, as I said earlier, is that place where you've never been before. If you've already been there, let's say you're doing an affirmation of I have a thousand dollars in my checking account at all times, right? It's an affirmation many of us would like to make, right? But you've never had a thousand dollars. You've never had over a hundred dollars in your checking account after all the bills and everything have been paid, right? So you have no belief that you can get there, right? So you have to change it back to, as I said earlier, I accept the possibility of having. Now, if you have a thousand dollars, if you have five thousand dollars in your bank account saying I have a thousand dollars in my bank account at all it's not going to take you to the next level because you're there it's no longer your growing edge it's this big leaf that's already out there doing its thing it's not the little one up here just exposing itself so you have to constantly update your affirmations right anything you want to add to that okay so that's where I would go with that. Yes, it was a, the thing off of Saturday Night Live that I was referring to. And yes, they were making fun of folks who said it with no hope of ever getting there. But they could have gotten there if they just stepped back. Had he said it, you know, I, I may be able to love myself. I may be smart. He can begin to own those possibilities. Mm -hmm. Any other questions anything about else? anything we talked about? How do you let go of that ego to focus more on flow? Uh, flow? How do you let go of the ego to focus more on flow? Go for it. Oh, me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, part of what we have shared before is that I don't think we can be get rid of ego 100%. I think it's part of the game. I think you need it like a key to, for a ignition of a car. But helping ego go to its space, what it, it's here for, right? and not be in control is what you're asking about. Mm -hmm. and, and first step is acknowledging, and you just did, acknowledging that you know that ego is um, running the show and that it's from your ego that you come. The second thing is to, um, in my world, is to befriend your ego, mm -hmm. to literally have a conversation in your head or in journaling or however, and befriend that part of yourself. We're not trying to be like it's the devil. We're not trying to get rid of it no. and kick it out. We're saying, I understand you have a role here, mm -hmm. and I accept that. And then helping ego do that role. What's the job you want your ego to do? Um, maybe help protect you in a bad situation, or maybe help take care of you, but not be in charge all the time. So who is in charge all the time? When you come from a place of true compassion and love for yourself and for others, then that space of love and source becomes more in the forefront. And ego is still in the car, but it's more in the back seat. What else? As she said, our ego is very necessary. For, for me, I look at it more as a user interface that comes with the human body because I realize I am not my body, I am not my mind, I am not any of them, not my ego. Uh, just the same as I can say I'm not my car, I'm not my house. Right? There's no difference in those statements. So it's about recognizing the ego has a role. I need my car, I need my house. They're how I function. The clue for me of letting go of my ego, moving beyond ego is perhaps a better way, is one, as, as Trisha said, recognize the ego for what it is. Don't aggrandize it. Do not assume you are your ego, for you are not. Um, the ego, the, 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 you may ask, how do you tell between ego and spirit, ego and soul, whatever words you may want to use. The ego is always concerned about itself and itself alone. It has n the, your ego has no concern for any other human being, plant, animal, anything on this planet. It is only concerned about itself 
its needs, its wants, its desires. You're already seeing the challenge here, right? So to move past that is simply to recognize you are more than that, to recognize that the ego may make a suggestion of something you want, but is it simply something you want in the moment, or is it something that will serve your highest good or the highest good of others? Then you begin to move past it. As your motivation in life, as your passion is not the right word, but I'll use it as your passion in life becomes about how much you can give, how much you can share, then you are moving further and further beyond the ego. Right. So thinking of others, helping someone else, volunteering, being kind, compassion, reaching out, doing things not in a I'm nothing and you're everything so I should do things for you, not in a subservient role because that still is ego. Yes, your ego is also transactional. And what I mean by transactional is I will give you this if you will give me that. Everything is a trade-off with the ego. There is no altruism in the ego. Altruism comes from spirit, from source. And so a lot of people will say, you know, I was really nice to this person and I helped them when they were sick and they didn't come help me when I was sick. That's definitely that transaction. That's the ego. And so acknowledging where your ego runs your life and realizing that abundance comes from all different ways. So let's say I do something nice for you and you don't do something nice back, but you do something nice for me. That to me is how the abundance works. It's not a direct transaction. That's why I say you have to kind of be in the flow of what's happening because it's not like you owe me because I was nice to you. That's ego. When we're able to say I'm going to do something nice for you or have compassion or empathy in your story or whatever just because and I get nothing out of it. That's actually coming from a place of source or soul or oneness and not coming from a place of ego. So just recognizing that more and more and then focusing on just the things that compassion, gratitude, all of those types of things can help the ego just kind of calm down. And don't hear anything that we just said that you should give it all away and not take care of yourself because you have to take care of yourself before you can even give something to someone else. Right. One of the principles of attitudinal healing is giving and receiving are the same. And when I first heard that, I struggled with that a little bit. If I give you a dollar, I don't have a dollar. But what I realized is maybe you didn't have enough money to go get a McDonald's burger. So by giving you a dollar, I now have the response of, oh, I was able to assist someone else in meeting their needs. Doesn't that mean I expect it back from them? Doesn't mean I expect it back from anybody. It is literally in that instant return. They are the same. Does that answer your question? Yes. Obviously, there are probably more words than you wanted. Obviously, there's practices like meditation and things like that that can help you focus more on the compassion side as well as actions and things like that as well. But it really is first identifying what is from ego and what is not and having a definition and clear line. And don't think your ego won't show back up and go, hello, on a regular basis. Again, like I said, it's not about getting rid of it. Multiple times a day. It's about embracing it. Yeah. Right. Any other questions? Anything else? Other comments? So how do you, for example, and let's talk about money, right? Yeah. So the money helps you in this game to feel stable, right? So if you're just doing your day-to-day job, you have a certain income, but we are programmed that we need to save for our future. So how do you find the stability when there is no savings for the future and not feel that you're going to work for the rest of your life, survive? How do you get off that 
so this system of survival and and putting the stability on the financial part mm -hmm. and actually feeling stable mm -hmm. with that. You, you know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. First of all, the only thing that can project itself into the future is your ego. That's the only part of you that gives a flying flip about the future or the past. That's it. Not to say that savings is bad. <laughs> no, not to say that savings is bad. No, I'm not saying that. Um, but what, what I would suggest is if, you, if you're lacking that kind of stability at this moment um, and you want to feel, you, you want to do something, it can be as simple as $10 a paycheck to put in the savings account or to put in a, a jar under the bed. I don't care. Yeah, no, but I mean, like, how do you feel, uh, how do you find the stability without leaning on the money to be your stability. How, how do you find ease? That's a little more challenging because that's going to require you to go back and dig into your belief systems of what does it mean to be stable? Mm -hmm. What does it, what do I require to be stable? Right? Uh, do I require a 4,000 square foot house with a swimming pool and a theater in it in order to feel comfortable and secure for my future? No. No. Do I require shelter? Yes. Right? How do I define that shelter? Right? And that's where you may find that you can make some adjustments that bring you back into that ease. Right? Um, I, just a friend of mine, very good friend. Um, he made his first ten million dollars when he was thirty-seven years old. He lost it all by the time he was forty. <laughs> all right. In between those two, he'd gotten married, and he, you know, you lose that kind of money and that kind of status, and he was very depressed. And his wife looked at him one day after a year of depression and said, "I did not marry you to be broke." And he went. And then he had to go back and start recreating again. He didn't need that much money. He still doesn't. Um, but his comfort level was different than hers. My comfort level will be different than Trish, different than yours, different than anybody else out here. So you have to go back and what is it that I need? What, 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 what is the simplest form that I can have to, fee to feel secure? Once you've identified the simplest form, uh, and when I counsel people, coach people, that's one of the first things I say, because a lot of times, because we're entrepreneurs, we're serial entrepreneurs, they'll come to us and go, I want to be an entrepreneur. I go, great, you don't really. Uh, <laughs> right? But then I'll look at them and say, so you've made that decision. What is the minimum amount you have to have to live on? And I had someone look at me, they were in their 40s. They said, I have to have $150,000 a year coming in just to live. Looked at her and went, really? That's how much it costs you to cover your apartment? That's how much it costs you to eat? It costs you that much? Oh, no, that's just how much I have to have. Mm -hmm. right? What are you hearing? Who's making that statement? Her ego. Right? She, will, she literally tried, fell on her face as an entrepreneur because she set that so far out of reach that she never went and looked, what do I need to feel safe? And if you recognize that minimum, the least common denominator of what it requires for you to feel stable and safe, and you find you already have that, then you have the grounding and the strength to take the steps to grow beyond that. Mm -hmm. All right? So that would be my answer. Yeah, this is really good, thank you. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Anything else on anything we've talked about? From oneness to source to abundance. You do a short class, short Q and A, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're Fifteen minutes already. So. Hey, there you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. If there are no further questions. Thank you for being here tonight. Yeah. Uh, if you're not on our mailing list and want to be, please sign the the uh, sheet out by the dragon in the pyramid. Uh, ah. Legibly, all I need is your you name and your email. You. No, don't want to yet. Okay. Um, other than that, 
Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.